Welcome back to Blender Frenzy. I am Justin, and we are continuing our borderline animation today. Uh, if you haven't seen the rest of them or the previous ones, go back and watch those uh, to get caught up to speed. But uh, last time we learned how to render out an image sequence um, so that now today what we're going to do is bring that into the video sequence editor so that we can start to overlay it on something else. And today we're going to actually mess around with some masking so that we can mask out our text. So let's get started, and today I have a surprise for you. What we are going to use to do that is ah, Blender 2.82 new release, and look at how spiffy that looks. Um, yes, so you can change your settings here. Um, I'm just going to click load 2.81 settings, and we are good to go. Okay, so um, I am going to open up uh, the video sequence editor by pressing this add workspace plus button go to video editing and then video editing now I uh, have been using a different blend file for our actual animation um, to render out our image sequence um, but I actually like to keep my image sequence blend file and my video uh, video rendering blend files separate and this is just for convenience sake so I don't have to keep changing the settings uh, uh, from from my output so uh, down here I'd have to change it from PNG to FFmpeg and then back again and uh, I just have different settings that I like to use for both of those so that's just a tip if you want to um, be be rendering you know image sequences and video kind of keep those separate uh, blend files it's just easier that way okay so the default layout this is the default layout for the video editing and the browser over here uh, you can see you can pull in files from your file browser it's worthless at least for me because um, one I can't see my full name so if I come over here to my tutorials uh, you can see I start with the date of what when I started um, working on the tutorial but I can't see the full name and it doesn't look like there's a way to change that um, um, there now there may be and, and let please let me know if there's if if what I'm showing you now I can change then that would be good but I can't see the full name and even if I go to my vertical list I can't see the full name and I can't change the size of the columns so normally with file browsers you can kind of drag out that column yeah I can't actually here, let me position myself in my little bubble here I didn't check that before I started um, but yeah I can't drag this out anymore and I don't like that um, so uh, also if I go here I think this is it yeah so here's my the, here's the image sequence by the way um, the image sequence here this is what we had last time so basically I just made an image sequence folder and a borderline one folder so that in case I needed to test out several image sequences I have borderline one two three you can do whatever naming convention you want but uh, in my borderline one, I started the file name with borderline one and then underscore so that it could add the, f the frame number and then PNG at the end. So I've got frame one to frame 38, which consists of all of the frames in our animation. Um, so that's what we did last time. So, uh, OK, so going back here, that's what we're looking at here. Um, now, if I press A, hover my mouse over here, and I press A to select all of them, and then you think, oh, well, now I can just click and drag those into here. Well, no, it's not doing that. What it's doing is if you click and drag, that's also your selection in your file browser, which I actually like. Um, but what I found <laughs> to click and drag uh, them into here, you have to actually select the icon. So let's do that again. Press A to select all of them and click and drag the icon. And when you drag it in here, it does not drag the entire image sequence. So if I scrub through here, nothing happens. There's no animation because it's just one frame. It's just the it's just the frame from the icon that I chose. So uh, if I do that, yeah, you can see it's just that frame for any of those. And that's it's just worthless to me, so that I can't use this at all. So I'm going to go click and delete these by pressing X, click the strip, press X, and then erase strips. So um, what I'm going to do instead is change this here. I'm going to just drag this out a little bit and then come up to this icon over here where it says editor type file browser. Click that and then click image editor. And we're going to be using this for our mask in a little bit. 
Okay, so instead, come down here to add in our strip. You can either click add here um, and then image sequence, or if you hover your mouse over the timeline, shift A and then image sequence. And we've already navigated to this folder in Blender. That's why it's already here. A um, couple things about this, you can actually uh, right click and then go to display mode and display thumbnails. So then you can see all your animation here or all the frames of your animation in little thumbnails, which is really cool. I like that. Um, you can also come up here and do the same thing. So this is uh, display as thumbnails and you can do your sorting here as well. Or your, fil sorry, your, sorter your sorting and your filtering. Same thing with the right click. So vertical list, we're going to go back there because I want to show you it starts from 1 and it goes to 38. But if you accidentally click the uh, name column uh, little header up here, it flips them. So now it's from 38. Oh, here, let's do it again. 38 to 1. And if you add all of them in like this, so I'm going to press A to add all of them in and then add image sequence or add image strip, sorry. And then you play by pressing the space bar, then it plays your animation backwards because it's starting at the last frame. It's starting at frame 38 to going to frame one. And so uh, that is why your animation plays backwards. So I'm just gonna click and press X to delete that. Uh, Shift A again to add in an image sequence. And this time I'm just gonna make sure we sort that from one to 38 press A to select all and then add image sequence and now if we play it you can see it's playing from start to finish just like we want it to and down here you can see it's kind of caching that in that's what this little orange bar is down here so when you first cache something in it's going to be a little bit slower but then we can kind of go over it and play it again and once it's cached in we can see our animation coming in there cool now, um, this is your image strip, of course. Uh, you can click and just click and drag that around. Um, uh, now, once you move this, uh, your caching will go away, so you're going to have to cache it in again. But when you add in your image strip, it will always start wherever your cursor is. So if I come here and add an image strip, or do, just do this again, add in an image strip, see it always places it uh, at the um, right at that cursor. So let's uh, just get rid of that and to drag, you can just drag this to frame one. Um, you can also, if I click over here, press shift and then left arrow, and that will go to the beginning frame of your frame range. So now I'm gonna select my image sequence and then press shift S to snap it to the cursor. You can do this anywhere, shift S, move the cursor, shift S, it will always snap that to the cursor like that. So again, shift left arrow and then shift S, just like that, to bring it to the beginning. So let's cache that in again by pressing the space bar to play. And we're just gonna cache that in so we can get that going. Okay, there we go. All right, and shift left arrow. There we go. That is what our animation looks like from here. And you can see that right after the strip ends, then everything disappears because obviously the cursor isn't showing anything. So if you remember from the last video, um, when we rendered our animation, it was only uh, the keyframes that we had. So we didn't extend it past our last keyframe. And that was so that we're not rendering out uh, the exact same image over and over again. And I said that there was a better way to do that in uh, the video sequence editor. And so that's what I'm going to show you now. Um, so basically the general principle is you just want to render out the motion. So everything that is moving uh, should be rendered out in an image sequence and everything that is still, um, if you can help it, uh, should should not be rendered out because you can extend that in uh, the video sequence editor for something like this. So if you want to hang on that last frame, all you have to do is click this uh, handle here and either click and drag or press G and just drag that out. And see, now it will, if you play it, it will hang on that last frame. And so this is so much better and easier than to render out duplicate frames because it's gonna save space and it's gonna save time. So now I'm gonna undo that um, here and I'm going to click 
the handle, press G to grab, and then instead of moving my mouse, which I could, um, I'm going to type in 50. Enter. And the reason I'm doing that is because my key, uh, frame rate here is 24 frames per second. So uh, tw 50 frames is roughly two seconds. So I kind of want the uh, borderline animation after it's finished to hang there for two seconds. And then what we're going to do is we're going to reverse it. So uh, it looks something like this right now. Okay, so there's cached in and we can now see it hangs on that last frame for a little bit longer. So the next thing I want to do is make it go backwards. Select your strip, shift D to duplicate, and then you can just start dragging that around. If you drag it over on top of the other strip, you can see this red outline. Uh, that just means it's overlapping. If you just click, it will snap that to the end of the other strip, which is uh, really useful. But now if I press play, uh, it just starts over again because it's just an exact duplicate. So we want to reverse this um, by coming over here. Let's see. Uh, yeah, make sure this strip is selected. Go to Strip, Transform, Video. And uh, under Strobe, you see this option called Reverse Frames. Check that and voila, or voila, for the you French folk out there. Um, if I play that now, it's starting to go backwards. And of course, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit slow here. I'm going to see if I can change that. Let's go to um, our view or oh, preview. So if I go up to my preview tab, press N on the keyboard. Uh, let's do all oh, right here. Uh, proxy render size. We're going to do 25%. Uh, let's see if that goes any faster. Eh, not really, <laughs> not much. So I'm going to bring that back. We'll do 100% there. Eh, I guess it kind of does go a little bit faster. We'll do 50%. Um, but anyway, let's go back. I'm just clicking up here um, where this playhead is. Uh, if you just click on the numbers, you can see uh, that it, it changes where the playhead position is. Then I can just press the space bar to play. Okay, so it's cached in. Let's go back to the beginning and you can see it comes in and then it goes back out. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. But we also don't want this last one, or at least I don't want this last one to hang on the last frame there. So uh, easy, easy way to get rid of that offset. That's what this is called. This is an offset where you can see where the purple ends and then that handle has extended out. Just select the strip and press Alt O and that clears that offset there. Okay, so that is adding our image sequence here into the video sequence editor. And now let's add a mask. So what I wanna do is uh, right at the beginning here, uh, well, beginning and the end where the text is kind of still hanging here, I don't want to see this here because I want this to kind of come up into existence in the middle of the frame. So, the first thing I'm going to do is select both of these and then press Control G to group them into a meta strip, which is this, because I want to apply the mask to this meta strip. And come up here to our image editor. If you don't have that as an image editor, just click that icon, choose image editor, and then right next to new, the drop down, we're going to click render result and then scroll out. And now we can press F12 or come up here to render and then render image, which is F12 and you see here. Now, if you see uh, your render come out into a another window that's full screen, or it, I guess it doesn't have to be full screen, but if it comes out into another window and you don't want that, come up here to edit, go to preferences on interface, uh, under editors and temporary windows, choose render in and then keep user interface. And then that way, um, when you press F12, a new window won't pop open. Uh, but here's our where our render result is, and these two should match. So now we want to add in a mask to mask out this text. And that is really easy. All you have to do is come to View, go to Mask, and then Add, and then Square. 
and then you can see our square appears down here in the bottom left corner. If I press G to grab, I can grab that and move that around. I'm just going to kind of place it in the middle here and then uh, press S to scale and G to grab. I'm just going to try to position this around that. X to, uh, nope, not, nope, <laughs> S to scale and then X to scale on the X axis, which is left and right. I'm just going to make sure I just cover the text there. You can also, if I press Alt A, deselect all of them. Press B to box select um, as many of the corners as you want. G to grab, and then X to scale it, or to grab it on the X axis, or Y to grab it up and down, on just on the Y axis. So that's just another way you can do it. Alt A, B, grab these. G, Y, up and down like that. Okay, that looks good there. So um, now what I'm gonna do is press F12 to render that again. And you can see um, nothing's happening. <laughs> and that's because we haven't actually uh, added this mask to our meta strip. But before we do that, let's name our mask. So up here in the header, if you middle click and drag or just scroll, you can see um, more of the header there. Go to where it says mask here, click in there, and I'm going to just make this more specific. I'm going to add an underscore, and then I'm going to add text. Enter. So I know that this mask is masking out our text. And now let's click our meta strip here, and then go all the way over here to our properties. Go to modifiers tab, add strip modifier, and then choose mask. And then for the mask input type, we're going to select mask. And then for the mask, we're going to click in there and then select our mask text, which we just made. And boom, now we can see our text has disappeared. And so we think, oh, this is working. Well, we're not on frame one. So let's go to frame one, shift left arrow. And oh, look at that. Our text is there. So what's happened? Um, well, if I click and I start dragging, you can see that our mask is working but it's working the opposite way that we want it to work. Uh, everything that's inside of the mask is being shown, and once it goes out of the mask, it disappears. So we wanna switch that, so come over here to our properties and uh, press the in key, in for November, and then choose the mask tab. And um, my first instinct to change uh, the, um, uh, the mask, the invert the mask is, the blend mode. So I thought, oh, well, if we're on merge add now, maybe merge subtract is going to work. Um, so I did that and then press F12 to, and it's like, oh, okay, now it's working. See, now everything in here has disappeared. And if I start dragging, you can see that's, that is true. But as I drag my playhead, you can see that now we don't see any text at all. <laughs> and so, um, Nothing is being shown. We don't see our border either. Um, and so that is because it's not only cutting out everything inside of the box, it's also not taking into consideration anything outside of the box. So let me show you what's happening. So if we come up here to, uh, let's press in again to get rid of this for, for now. So if we come up here to mask display and then choose overlay, you can see we just have a black image. Now, a mask is a black and white image, and all of the areas that are white are visible, and all of the areas that are black are invisible. So let's press in again here, and go back to our merge add. And you can see with our merge add, let's go to our frame one again here. Uh, you can see that everything within the white area is being shown, and everything, once it gets outside into the black area, it is uh, it disappears. So that is, let's refresh this by Control R and then F12 again to re-render that just so we can have a little bit of a smoother uh, transition there. And my computer, of course, is going slow as always. But you can see now it's being cut off because that's where it goes outside of the white area. So what we want to do is flip the black and the white. And to do that is not the blend mode. To do that is actually this icon right here. If you hover over it, it says Restrict View. 
uh, invert the mask black and white. And so just click that and now everything outside of the mask is white and everything inside is black. If I re-render that F12 and then start dragging my playhead down here, you can see that now we have the desired result. All right, I've cached this in and this is what it now looks like. So our finished result is, ta-da, there we go. So we have our borderline animation. Uh, the text is coming up in to that border and then the border is going around it and then it just reverses and goes back out. So what we could do is just render this out into another image sequence if we wanted to, uh, once we tweak it the way we like it, to get that set and then we can have that as you know an overlay onto our video or like a you know a, an introduction or a chapter you know chapter title whatever um and yeah so uh so that's that's the way you would do that but if we wanted to add a little bit more flourish to our mask what we could do is feather it a little bit and um, then it wouldn't be uh the text wouldn't come in um just straight from this hard line there so right now it's just a straight line and it's coming up uh, right right through that so let's add in a little bit of a feather and just come over here press in on the keyboard and come up to where are we at here uh, mask transform and then scale feather now uh, I gotta make sure all of these are selected by pressing a so all the corners are selected um, I actually don't have to do all of the corners to, technically because it's only coming up through the top corner. But we're going to do all for now. Uh, just go mask, transform, again scale feather, shortcut is alt s. And then start dragging your mouse and you can see that that has a little bit of a feathering effect to where the black is kind of blending into the, the white there. And so if we... F12 on that again, and then again, start dragging here. You can see what's happening there. Our text is kind of fading in as it comes up. And that's pretty cool, except for, uh, let's see if we play that. Once our border comes around, uh, that fade goes into <laughs> our, our, our bottom line there. And that's not what we want. So what we need to be able to do is disable this uh, after the text comes up. Now you can animate the text. Um, it's a little bit difficult and it's also a little bit, I wouldn't say difficult, it's kind of the same as animation, but it's a little bit glitchy. Um, so what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna enable and disable this. So I believe that I can do that by coming over here to our modifier, our strip modifier. So make sure your strip is selected and you're on the modifiers tab over here. Um, you can mute the modifier and unmute the modifier. So as I mute it, you can see it has no effect. If I un unmute it, then it, uh, you know, comes back, obviously. We, we can animate this, and that's what this little uh, property here, this little button next to it. So where do we want to begin? Well, first of all, let's go to shift uh, left arrow to go to frame one. Uh, we want to make sure that it is enabled, so this is not muted. So the eye, meaning you can see it, uh, right next to it, let's just click that. So right now it's visible or it's enabled. So we're going to enable that. You can see coming up there. Okay, now right, uh, gosh, and it's going so slow. This is so ridiculous. Uh, well, hopefully you guys have better uh, computers that are <laughs> faster than mine is. Um, but anyway, um, okay, so now that we've moved our uh, playhead, you can see our property or our little mute button has turned green. That means that there is a keyframe, just not on this particular frame. Uh, so we wanna click the animate property button again to add a keyframe. And then we're gonna move one frame forward. I'm just gonna hit my right arrow to go to frame 23. And then this is where we are going to mute that. And then click our animate property 
So that's muted on the next frame. So frame 22, uh, it's still active. And you can see that if I keep going backwards, you can see that text fading in there. But then as I scroll this way, once it reaches frame 23, it's muted. Okay, so that's good for the first part of that animation. And then we want to do the opposite as it comes out. So right about here, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to let's see right here. Uh, we'll do we'll do right here. So right here, we want to make sure it stays the same. So we're going to click animate property because we don't want to change anything yet. And then on the next frame, so just one frame over, we want to enable this again and then click our animate property. And now it is enabled and you see your text going in fading down that way. All right, so I'm gonna cache this in and we'll see what we have. Okay, here is our final result. Ta-da! Back down. And I like that. So let's end, uh, let's go over here. Let's do it at six plus 10. Um, you can also press control T to toggle this between the frames. So let's go to frame 150 and uh, press control end to end our frame on 150. Okay, let's go back to the beginning and then we can just play and then we can see this cycle through. So yeah, that's pretty elegant there, I think. All right, so what I'm gonna do is gonna stop here now um, and then we'll do one more video where we'll overlay it onto a background and maybe make a little vignette uh, around it so it's even more stylish. Uh, but if you want an easier way to make these borders, go ahead and check out my courses at courses.blenderfrenzy.com and I'll show you that now. If you want an easier way to create these borders, you can use the Easy Borders rig that I created specifically for creating quick 2D borderline animation for things like titles and name tags for your videos. The rig has drag and drop handle controls, sliders, and color swatches to quickly adjust the size, position, and color of the border and fill. You can also easily make text appear and disappear with the vanish controls. Everything is on one screen so you don't have to keep switching back and forth between panels and settings, and there are no add-ons required. The rig is just contained in a regular blend file, which means that it's ready to go straight out of the box. So if you're interested, head on over to my new course platform at courses.blenderfrenzy.com where you can watch the welcome video and check out the Easy Borders course and expansion pack. Just click on one of the course options to see what's all included, plus a full description of the course. The course contains six modules, including a full introduction and Blender setup for those who are not yet familiar with Blender, two quick start modules to get you animating your first Easy Border in just minutes, a beginner's animation module, and much, much more. Right now, Easy Borders is still in early access, which means it's 50% off the normal price. This is only for a limited time, so if this is something that interests you and you'd like to show your support, come on and get it while the offer still stands. Just go to courses.blenderfrenzy.com and click on the course, and then click Add to Cart. It is an online course, so create a new account, and then you will have the option to purchase any of the courses that are offered. So I'm excited and I can't wait to see you there.